Welcome to African Math, Lesson 2. What are numbers? And why are numbers numbers? I recall when going to school, I recall when going to school that that answer was never given to me in class. I was told that That's a seven. I was never told why it's a seven. I was just expected to believe that it was a seven. This is a five. This is a three. But why? Well, in ancient times, Africans realized that there is a difference between chaos and quantity, uh, chaos and order. And to count by ones was considered chaotic. So if we look at this random group of dots, it's hard at first glance to know what the value is. So what ancient Africans realized is if you organize chaos quantities into groups, they become more recognizable. So you see here that we have a group of four plus a group of two plus a group of one and then when they saw that if you organize groups and I mean quantities into groups they become more recognizable then you could start to add and compile them easier but even when you add groups and when you add quantities into groups the groups can also grow to be chaotic. So what ancient Africans decided to do was to take to take these groups and assign them symbols. Symbols that would make the group easier to recognize and to process and calculate. So in Metal Netter, the way they would identify ones would be simply by writing sticks so this is a group of four it's easy to recognize and this is a group of two and this is one now whenever groups begin to no longer be recognizable they're then converted into symbols that are easy to recognize. For instance, the group of four plus two plus one might be easier to recognize like this. Two groups of three and a one. So now we've created another group. Or we could do a group like this. I'm purposely not counting because I want you to understand the concept of groups. So you easily see that this is a group. You see that it's a group of two fours and a one. So it makes it much easier to recognize the quantity by seeing the group. But once you do that many groups of nine, then it gets to be a little confusing. So what our ancient ancestors did was create a symbol that represented a different quantity. This symbol represents in Kiswahili Kumi, a quantity of 10. And this would be Isharini. Thelathini, and in English that would be 
10, 20, 30. So these are different ways to have a symbol identify a quantity. Now I want to make it very clear that what we here at African Math identify as something we call chaos quantities. This is what we would consider a chaos quantity. Okay? Chaos quantity is simply counting by ones. It is one of the most inefficient means in which to count. So the goal is to avoid counting by ones. And this is also important to our Watoto's who are taught to count on their fingers or taught to count using manipulatives and counting by ones. We here at African Math attempt to avoid counting by ones because we consider that a chaos quantity. Instead, again, the goal is to organize the quantities into groups. So here we have a group of four. I believe this is already a selected group of four. Here's another group of four. How many more groups of four? That's a one. That's a two. That's a one. Okay, so even when we get our chaos quantities of ones, we bring them into order and we create new groups. So here we have six groups of four. The reason this is very important is because on the Dehudi, our ancient ancestors came up with a system where place and value determines different groups. You establish a different group which becomes a symbol that is recognizable and therefore easier to process. Okay, here's an example. Earlier, we reduced the chaos quantity of four into the symbol of four. Well, on the Dehudi, the symbol for four is activating a bead in the third cup. That will always be the symbol of four and only four. Now, here's what's very important. Going back to this symbol is four. This symbol is four has no relationship to any other number. It's just a symbol that you're supposed to memorize and you just take it as four and if I say well four plus two it's another symbol that has no relevance to this symbol the previous symbol so I have to memorize that and then I'm supposed to memorize what these symbols are when they come together. African math isn't like that. African math is very different in that you apply one symbol. Remember here we applied the symbol of four, but all of these symbols have a relationship to one another. I'll give you an example. The third cup has a value of four. The second cup has a value of two. When placing a bead in the second cup, I automatically activate a new value or a new symbol. This symbol will always be six. It'll never change from being six. So there's an intimate relationship with four, which is the third cup, and two in the second cup and by them interchanging with one another or interacting with one another, they create symbols that have specific value. If you remove the four, then two is alone 
and it exemplifies its value. Every time you place a bead on the board, on the Dehuti, you activate its value, therefore changing the symbol. Okay, very important because each symbol validates the other. This is currently three. Okay, so if you look at the symbol and you always recognize this, that's a three, it will always be a three. It's never going to stop being a three. And if you trust that, then when you add three plus four, you recognize the symbol of seven. And this will always be seven. It will never change from being seven. So if you look at this symbol, the first three cups occupied by a bead equals the quantity of seven. If you remove the second cup, which is two, you'll reveal the value of five. This is five. It will always be five and it will never change from five. So the, the importance of realizing that chaos quantities have got to be converted into recognizable groups and then those recognizable groups are then converted into symbols of efficiency. These symbols are more efficient because I'm using two beads to represent a quantity of five. Here, I'm using one bead to represent a quantity of four. So when it comes to processing in a market or when it comes to counting stones to build a structure, a house, a temple, a pyramid, when it comes to measuring you know, invisible quantities, you, you need a way in which to represent a large quantity in the most efficient way. So here we use one bead to represent 2048. That's very efficient. More so than having to carry around 2048 pieces of gold for a transaction. So thank you very much for listening. Please continue to do your practices and understand that chaos quantity converted into groups that are recognizable and then convert it into symbols that can be processed.